I have been having fun in my Society of Idea Collectors art journal. I am just now beginning to actually use it, collecting those ideas. This video is all about episode 20 from Dee Dee Willingham. I believe it was last Monday that she aired that video and she challenged us with a mind map on low tech mech, meaning machines or mechanisms that are low tech. And in her video, which I will put a link to her channel and the video and her playlist in the description box below so that you can go look at this for yourself. The mind mapping exercise actually starts in the latter part of the video, perhaps the last 45 minutes of it, if you're interested in that mind mapping exercise. Low Tech Mech, she actually does mind mapping with the Ustream viewers that are in attendance in her Ustream. I find this very interesting. It's very fun to see how others contribute to a mind map. I really love when that happens. The first part of her video is all about the syllables journal and some of the pages that she's creating. It's all very interesting, but I'm zeroing in on this video on the challenge that she issues to people that are doing the Society of Idea Collectors. See? <laughs> and it is all about what she's calling low tech mech. She starts out building a list and I did that. I watched her list and there are some items on my list that cross over to hers, but there are some that are not too. And actually this inspires me to put in two more tabs and I included a lot of paper because I enjoy lists and mind mapping for sure. I need a lot of paper for those. But here I wrote low tech mech. I made my list of 50 items. Bobby pin, paper clip, brad, stapler, hole punch. These are low tech things. These aren't computerized, highly uh, mechanized items. Slide rule, a gate, tin cans, a stadium seat, a bicycle, a paintbrush. I built this list while I was sitting in a Zoom meeting with some of my art friends. I was listening to them talk about art while I was building this list. And then after I built it, this was all from me. They did not contribute to the list, but I asked one of the people out there to give me three numbers because I wanted three numbers when that person had no idea why they were giving me three numbers. And the numbers correspond to items on this list, such as Dee Dee does in her mind mapping exercise. So the numbers were 41, 29, and 7. 41 was Velcro, 29 was a paintbrush, and 7 was a whisk. Then the idea was to take those three items and mind map them and mind mapping them specifically on their use. Why do you use Velcro? I went into some of the other things because I like to. I like to know who created Velcro, wh when, and so I'm not going to read everything on here, but I thought that there were some things that were very interesting. There is actually a hashtag that says, don't say Velcro promoted by Velcro Industries, and you can go out and read about this on their site, but they are encouraging people who refer to Velcro to refer to it as a verb, not a noun. And in their explanation of why it has to do with their patents and trademarks and all of that, that's Mary's paraphrase. <laughs> 
go read it. It's really interesting. I thought that was really interesting that they would have a hashtag saying, don't say Velcro. Then what I did around the circle here on the word Velcro, I listed verbs that would describe its use. A fastener, a latch, a lock, a closure. I also picked out the history, the definition of Velcro, the origin of that word, where did that word Velcro come from, and then I picked out a quote. I like to pick out quotes. It may be related to use or it may not. The quote that I picked out here was, aside from Velcro, time is the most mysterious substance in the universe. That was a quote by David Berry, and I did not use the quote in my final final result of this mind mapping exercise, but I thought that was a fun quote. So I had a lot of fun doing this. You can see by everything that I wrote down on here. I'm not going to read it all to you. It would take more time than what I want to spend in this video. Then I went on to paintbrush and okay, what's the history of the paintbrush? And of course, well, we know paintbrush goes way back to the caveman days where they painted on the walls in the cave. What they used as a paintbrush is another story. It might have been weeds put together or, you know, people can even use their fingers as paintbrushes. <laughs> so that was fun. And the parts of a paintbrush are the bristles, the handle, just the little clamp that holds those bristles into a paintbrush and then there's who uses them why are they using it where are they using it that whole who what when where why why not <laughs> whatever <laughs> so and this is where I started where my mind really started getting creative I'm going velcro paintbrush velcro paintbrush and then if you're in art long enough and if you're around enough professional artists they always tell you not to mix paint with your paintbrush first of all it'll get your paint all messy on your brush but also in your palette I'm one who violates that rule all the time especially when I'm doing watercolor I will have a dirty brush that I may have red on and then I'll go right into my white and I'll get pink in my white and <laughs> yes, I break the rules. But that whatever, that was whatever for me. That was the rule, but don't do that, Mary. Well, I do it. Whatever. The definition, the history, the origin of the word. But you'll see later where paintbrush, velcro, and then I came over to the word whisk. Oh, let me get the, the words, the verbs here uh, for the use was cover, apply, spread, smear. I put use to represent because it, it was like a paintbrush is used to represent an object. That's kind of a derivative use, but I put it there and then slather. Then you come over to the word whisk. The verbs are beat, stir, mix, whip, blend. And you see, I don't have as much here. It seems like when I'm mind mapping more than a couple words, I get tired. <laughs> I, I, and not only was I getting tired, I was getting inspired. I wanted to move on to my, in quotes, bright idea that I got from this. Definition was to uh, take or move in a specific direction, to whisk, like to, to like whisk away, to move away. Uh, history of the whisks, the early whisks were like bundles of twigs, but the wire whisk was really popularized in the 1960s by Julia Child. Origin of the word is Scandinavian. And then I'm going, well, why Scandinavian all of a sudden? Because usually we see Latin and all that. But the the Scandinavian derivative that they gave was visk, V-I-S-K, 
which means a rapid sweeping movement. And I thought it was very interesting up here, this fact that it says the more wires a, a wire whisk has, the more air whipped in and the better that your substance is is stirred. So I thought that that was interesting. So combining these three, after you do your mind mapping on each one of these low tech mechanisms, then you go and you, Dee Dee used two, I can't remember the two implements that she used, but I decided to combine all three and I did it like this. I put a Velcro, a paintbrush, and a whisk. And what I came up with was, in quotes, Neri's programmable paintbrush. Where do you get programmable? Well, I was thinking of a paintbrush, and I was thinking of that term of whisking and stirring and mixing and that rule that I always break about where I... I use my paintbrush to mix paint, and I thought, well, maybe I should take Velcro and Velcro a um, palette knife on the end of it, and then if I was mixing paint, instead of mixing right on the palette, I could just turn my brush over and have my little palette knife mixer. And that I thought about that for a while, and I said, yeah, that's very low-tech, but I want something more sophisticated, so I in my combination programmable paintbrush, I went from very low tech to very high tech because my imagination took it that way. And here I just put a paintbrush across my three low tech implements. But what I came up with, and I'm gonna have to hold this a little closer to me to read it, is in the arts, the trades, uh, decor, this no-no rule about mixing paint with a paintbrush is wiped away. The paintbrush does the mixing for you. You have all these recipes that are, in quotes, programmed into your paintbrush. This is a, coming from a low-tech to a high-tech paintbrush, but yet this paintbrush is very much like a paintbrush that we would hold, that would be comfortable in our hands. This is not a big clumsy thing with wires and, you know, this is, this is in my imagination, it's just like any other paintbrush that you would hold in your hand. Let me get one out here. Just, just like this. Only inside of here, this is my dirty paintbrush, inside of here would be all the recipes and formulas of paints that you could mix. So if you wanted a certain formula, you could just bring it up. So now... Take in mind that this is just my imagination. This is brainstorming. I can hear just some people saying, well, how are you going to do that? Are you going to punch numbers or what? I just speak to it. <laughs> I'll just say, give me red, please. You know, this is the the uh, Google Assistant paintbrush. <laughs> I'll just say, I want a certain color or a certain formula, and it'll bring it up. It's voice activated. I should write that down here because I'm just saying that while I'm speaking to you. I'm going to write that down here. Voice activated. Voice activated. So just, this is really the what else of my, of my mind mapping. I have whatever. I have what else. I have what if. I have whenever. I have why not. <laughs> These are all the questions that I've added to Dee Dee's who, what, when, where, why, and how. Kind of expands that to, oh, you think you solved it all. You think you have it all mind mapped. You walk away. You're doing your video and, oh, you're still brainstorming. You're still adding things onto there. And those are kind of my additional categories that I always add. So I have a voice-activated programmable paintbrush. The artist can program recipes of paint mixes into the barrel of the paintbrush and instead of you having to put your paintbrush into to paint, it automatically 
applies it. Don't ask me how it gets into there. I guess it's voice activated too, but the paint is automatically applied to the bristles. And there's a tiny, tiny electromagnetic whisk in the barrel of this that actually stirs up your paint for you. So according to the formula and to the recipe. So that's how I took this imaginary brainstorming mind mapping far-fetched whatever <laughs> cool idea mary's voice activated programmable paintbrush i still haven't worked out how that paint's going to get in there according to the formulas i guess i just wish it in there <laughs> but oh well that's that's a little snafu snag, but there, that, hey, this is just fun. This is nothing that's, this is, who knows? There may be a way for it to, to, rather than having, you know, you could think of a tube hooked up to different barrels of paint, but I would rather think that there would be the primary colors in here, the red, yellow, blue colors, and then of a specific paint it could be oil paint it could be acrylic paint it could be watercolor and then according to that formula that you specify and according to the medium that you're using that recipe will go out to the barrel of your paint and measure in the applications that you have for your recipe that you voice activated to the paintbrush and it will Drain it down into your bristles so that you can paint your picture. And you can have palettes. You can have palettes, like just say, I want to do skin tones. You can have a skin tone palette. You could have skin tone palettes according to the race or the nationality of the person that you are painting. So there's just, hey, it's an imaginary paintbrush. It is Mary's programmable voice activated paintbrush. This was a really fun exercise. I had a lot of fun doing this. I have a lot of fun mind mapping these and taking it to extremes, so to speak, but also learning the history. I knew a little about the, the history of Velcro, but just going out and reading about it again was very interesting how this Swiss engineer went hunting and he was pulling burrs off of the fur coat of his dog and he studied how those burrs were sticking onto that fur and that's where Velcro came from. How cool is that? Just to learn the history of a product and how it came to market. Paint brushes and whisks are a little bit harder to study the history because they are such a common product. I mean, they evolved over time from ancient times into the current times. So it's it's just, it's very, very, very interesting. So thank you for listening to my little mind mapping session here. I love sharing these. I love mind mapping the words. I'm having so much fun with this. My Society of Idea Collectors book is going to be huge by the end of 2018. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.